Um, yeah, I'm waiting for you. In Alhamdulillah, Nahmadu wa Nastainu wa Nastakhiru, when I would be lahm in Shururi and Fusina was say Yati Amadina, may Yahdi Lahu Fala Mudilla, or may you live Fala de Allah, who I shed a la ilaha illa law, who had a hula shari kara, or I shed a Muhammad and Abdu who were a Suru. Allah Musalla Allah Muhammad or Allah Ali Muhammad, Kama Salaita Allah Ibrahim or Allah Ali Ibrahim in the Kahamidu Majid. اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد لا أتس بالعكس I don't like that Dear brothers and sisters الحمد لله We have made it this close to Ramadan and we hope we hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us access to this special occasion. We hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cause us to live another one or two days until we reach Ramadan. For Ramadan, I believe, is going to be announced or the moon is going to, we're going to try to sight the moon, yani, on either... Uh, tomorrow night or Monday night We have to Correct and we have to understand a few things upon entering Ramadan First and foremost as the title of today's lecture suggests that Ramadan is a month of change Ramadan is the best opportunity to repent, to turn bad habits into good habits, to rid yourself of any evil and corruption that is within oneself, to improve your life to improve your Iman, to improve your relationship with Allah Azza wa And this is one of the major benefits that one receives in Ramadan. Is that SubhanAllah, Allah makes everything different in Ramadan. Everything is different. If you think about the way we live Ramadan, you would see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala designed this month for the purpose of completely changing your life. Let's think about this. Our morning routine, ruined. Our lunch routine, ruined. Classes, any extra classes that we do, we stop doing it. Sleeping early, finished. Even people that do exercise and work out, they reduce that too. We have such a set schedule the entire month, uh, the entire year, sorry. We know exactly what we're doing, where we're going to wake up, when we're going to eat breakfast. We're going to get ready for work or school. We're going to come home, we can eat whenever we want. But then Allah sends this month in the entire year. And this month says to you, your schedule, chuck it in the bin. So when you're put in different scenarios that you're not used to that you have to adapt to quite quickly you're put in a new environment in your life even though you're living the same life but everything is upside down don't we feel like that in Ramadan? 
We feel like this in Ramadan. We have such a smooth life outside of Ramadan. Ramadan comes, nah, khalas, everything is finished. You gotta do stuff in certain ways now. Everything is just finished, everything's over the place. It's as if there is a new environment created for you. So when you are put in a new environment, this is the best chance, the best opportunity to say, you know what? I'm going to do things differently this time. I'm going to do things differently. I'm going to go overseas, for example. Or well, this is what happens to people that go overseas. Overseas, my routine is completely different. Let me try to adapt to positive changes and positive routines. Everything about Ramadan is a blessing, my dear brothers and sisters. SubhanAllah. Ramadan, as the scholar said about taqwa and about Ramadan and about fasting, one of the major benefits that a person benefits from Ramadan is they learn a bit of discipline. They learn to be disciplined. And discipline is extremely important. Because without discipline, a person will never change. Without habits and being disciplined upon habits, a person will never achieve anything. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, وَالصَّوْمُ جُنَّةِ Fasting is a shield, a safeguard. A protection because when we fast we have a heightened level of awareness this is naturally subhanallah everyone feels it in Ramadan everyone feels it every Muslim that is that fasts they have a heightened status or they have a heightened awareness level of awareness You care about things that you never cared about before. Why? Because you are disciplining yourself. Because you know, the one who fasts, the one who breaks his fast purpose day in Ramadan, the punishment that is coming is not easy. It is a severe punishment. So we refrain from things that are normally halal all of a sudden. We refrain ourselves from them. Why? Food, lust, desires, all of these things now that were an open pathway to you just moments before Ramadan, all of a sudden now you're extremely aware of your surroundings. All of a sudden, you are paying attention to things you never paid attention to before. Mahua, this is where the shaitan comes and grasps you too. When you start to desire things in Ramadan that you never desire normally outside of Ramadan. This is one of the major benefits of Ramadan. Discipline and change. The problem is, many of the mashayikh talk about these things. And many of the people want to change. But they simply don't know how to. So I want to make my class today, inshaAllah ta'ala, a very practical class. And we'll do some activities together, inshaAllah, in today's class. And I want everyone to be active with this. And help me out with this. One of my dear sheikhs in Medina, he used to emphasize on this point so often and frequent. Al Baramij, Al Baramij. He would say this all the time. Programs, programs. 
every opportunity he gets, the Sheikh will remind us about programs. He says, a Muslim has to have a program. A program where you write down your goals, where you write down what you want to achieve, where you write down what you want to leave off. How do I perform Salah better? Let's put a program for this. How do I become better in character? Let's write a program for this. How do I memorize the Quran? Let's put a program for this. How do I stop doing haram? Let's put a program for this. Programs is the path of the successful. Programs is the path of the successful. So how do we change and how do we take advantage of this opportunity? And what benefit do we get from changing anyway? Let's start with this first. What is the benefit of change? Why should we change? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Ra'd إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِقَوْمٍ حَتَّى يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِأَنفُسِهِمْ Look at this ayat. Look at this beautiful ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Listen very closely. Pay attention my dear brothers and sisters. Allah tells us you want to come out of your miserable situation? You want to better your life and better the life of the Muslims in general? Because wallahi, again, this is something that many people don't understand. That the ummah is connected. The ummah is connected. Our sins here in Australia are affecting Muslims all around the world. And vice versa. Their sins are affecting us. And their positivity and good deeds and working towards goodness also affects us here in Australia or wherever the Muslims are around the world. So this is one thing that we have to acknowledge first and foremost. Do we need change as an ummah? Before we start talking about practical steps in how to change, do we actually need to change? Do we actually have to plan and think about the future and how do we spread Islam? How do we spread the message of Allah in its correct understanding? Are we happy with our situation? Yani? Is anyone happy with the situation? Ikhwan? As some of the misguided people try to claim, Yaqi, you don't need khilafa. Islam, alhamdulillah, we're living in Islam, yaqi, look at us. The prosperity. The beauty, the kindness of Islam, the mercy of Islam. MashaAllah, yaqi, everyone's living comfortably, alhamdulillah. You go overseas to our countries. What did the khutaba speak about? Alhamdulillah, ala ni'mat al-aman, wal-istiqrar, alhamdulillah. والسماء تتساقط عليهم الحمد لله we live in prosperity الحمد لله we have security and everything is just roses and jolly and everything is good calm down what are you so aggro you're so aggressive calm down everything's fine what do you need to change the ummah is fine الحمد لله so long as we have يعني, kings and presidents and leaders that care so much about our security and care so much about Islam, masha'Allah, they have this profound wisdom that every single person of intelligence says that they're destroying the deen, but they are saying, no, we are protecting the deen, we have to understand. 
We have to believe in them, we have to trust them. So the question is again, do we need change? And why do we need change? Who can answer this question? Who can give me a couple of words of wisdom to answer or in response to this question? Yalla, Shuf. Allah, you like to answer all the time, mashallah. Shabab, in the back, yalla. Yalla, Zakaria. Do you think the Muslim Ummah is in a good situation? Alhamdulillah, we have security, prosperity. We can practice our deen. What more do you want? What do you think? Huh? Ah, Shabab in the back. Yalla, the youth. La, la, boys, yeah. Yalla. Are you paying attention or are you sleeping? Mr. Glasses. You, what's your name? Huh? Musa. Allah, he barik fiq. May Allah make you from the pioneers of Islam. Yalla, answer. Next to him. Yes, you're the one next to him, brother. <laughs> ah. Do we need to change? Do you think we need to change? Why? Yani, let's look at the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Let's look at the life of the Prophet. Let's take the example of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet came to Medina. MashaAllah, everyone greeted him. Everyone was waiting for him. Everyone was rushing to accept him into their houses. He came to the Prophet. The Prophet ﷺ came to Medina, established his masjid. Alhamdulillah, he was in security and peace and prosperity. Why couldn't the Prophet just stay in his masjid? He stay in your masjid. Khalas, everyone, Alhamdulillah, loves you. And everything is beautiful around you. Just stay in your masjid. Allah won't change. Allah won't bring new change unless you change yourself. Hey. Naam? What is the message of Islam? Is that you are secured and you are at peace yourself and everyone else can piss off? Everyone else can go to hell? Tuz. Zahlig, as the, as the sheikh says. Is this what the message of Islam is? Ya yeah, this Islam came to reform the lives of the people. And we are commanded to continue spreading the prosperity of Islam until Islam covers the entirety of the world. And until this happens, there is no such thing called, we don't have to advance. We don't have to spread. We don't have to call others to Allah. Because the, the kuffar on the day of judgment, the kuffar on the day of judgment, if you fail in making an attempt to preserve your deen and to spread your deen, they will come and they will grab you on the day of judgment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Rabbana la taj'alna fitnatan lilladheena kafaru. Oh Allah, do not make us a reason. Look, one of the dua in the Quran, ya akhwah. Do not make us a reason that the kuffar are swayed away and turned away from the deen. This is the meaning of the, of the, of the ayah. So it is not enough. That you and your direct family is secure. But what about the rest of the world, ya Justice has to be spread. And this is the message of the Anbiya. This is the message of the Prophets. The justice of Allah and the mercy of Allah has to be established in the land of Allah Azza wa Jal. And until you do so, there's no such thing as rest in this dunya. Until that is established, there's no such thing as rest. Inna Allah la yughayru ma bi qawmin hatta yughayru ma bi anfusihim. 
the change of the people and the situation of the people relies on individual change. The scholar said, although the context of the ayah is referring to evil, يعني, if they leave Islam, Allah will punish them. But the scholar said also the opposite is true. Meaning, if we repent from evil and go to goodness, also Allah will reverse those effects of evil. Which means the ayah could be understood in both ways. That if a person was upon Islam and then he left Islam, then Allah will punish this person and will change his environment, will change his situation from good to evil to bad. And the opposite is true. Subhanallah, the Shaykh, Hafizahullah, Shaykh Abu Ayman, he mentioned something very powerful. Very, very powerful, Yaqo. I want you to pay attention to these words. Extremely powerful words. He says, Subhanallah, if you think about if you think about what the Muslims mean, or what it means that the Muslims are present here in Australia, and if the kuffar understood this meaning, they would come and kiss our feet day and night. Because most likely, the punishment and curse of Allah has yet to descend due to the presence of the Muslimin. If the Muslimin were not here, what would Allah do to these people? Due to their oppression and aggression against the Muslimin. This is quite a powerful statement, my dear brothers and sisters. Think about this for a second. وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَأَنْتَ فِيهِمْ وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ مُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَهُمْ يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ Subhanallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi that Allah would not destroy these people due to your presence amongst them. Look what Allah says. Allah will not destroy and punish these people due to your presence amongst them. And Allah would not destroy the people why there are people that are repenting and making istighfar amongst them. Without the Muslims, what would Allah do to these oppressors? Maybe the reason Allah has not destroyed many of these superpowers yet is because there are pockets of Muslim amongst them. There are people calling to La ilaha illallah amongst them. So Allah delays the punishment. This is the understanding of these ayat. We are powerful, the Akhwa. Wallahi, we are powerful. We are powerful and mighty. But unfortunately, the sad reality is that we don't recognize our own potential. We don't recognize what we have within ourselves, which is an iman. Which is this conviction of Allah. We don't realize how powerful we are because of an iman. Not because of anything else. Not because power that we have in our own possessions. No. We are great and powerful because of Allah. So definitely the answer to the first question is we need to change. We need to change. We need to change to the better. And change starts from the individual. Tayyip, how do we change now? Everyone take out their phones. Or if you have a piece of paper, take out a piece of paper. And let's do some exercises together. We'll talk about practical ways. Look at this little filthy cockroach. Take out your phones, my dear brothers and sisters. Yalla, quickly. Let's write down some things and I'll give you some tips of what we can do as individuals and how we can schedule our time in Ramadan everyone open up pl uh, plain sheet I, I want to see everyone writing let's do this exercise together inshallah I want to see everyone writing where are you writing in your head uh, mashallah he's here he has it <laughs> This is the first point. 
people think that they have a schedule in their mind and this is sufficient no wallah ya akhwa yani i what i'm going to teach you now is something that i actually i actually had to take course a course in yani i'm not just making these things up this is something i took a course in and the course was a full day course of how to schedule and the most important thing of scheduling the most important thing of scheduling pay attention to this is writing it down physically because a person thinks that mashallah i have a supercomputer up here and i can remember what i have to do but it is not enough because if you're not physically seeing out in the reality something that is tangible it is still only a concept it's only an idea this is how the subconscious mind reads these type of things something has to be tangible in order for me to what to take it serious and people have to know about it too and this is the advantage of married people where you can put that peer pressure on your wife and your wife can put that peer pressure on you and i've done this before a person i spoke to once about this topic and they said yeah wallahi i'm so busy i have so many things to do i'm so anxious because tomorrow i have such a busy schedule i said to them come here well i have no time i want to memorize quran but i have no time i have this oh, so many things i said come here give me 5 minutes of your time write exactly what you have to do tomorrow so he started to write this and started to write this started to write started to write it turns out his whole schedule that in his head was so fuzzy and blocked all of his thoughts and made him so anxious he finished the entirety of his list within half an hour this is his whole day schedule he thinks he's busy he thinks he didn't have time but all of the things he had to do because he didn't write it on paper it was just lingering around his head and it overwhelmed the thinking process and when you're overwhelmed mentally you think that you're so busy and so congested but in reality you're not writing down things solves many issues and it is the first step to success of course what you're about to write has to be individualized because i don't know every single one's schedule or life all their goals <coughs> but i will give you the general scope or the general feeling of what should be written and how it should be written inshallah ta'ala this is the month of change i want to point out one thing too we have to be practical i don't want dreamers because dreamers are losers dreamers are losers that's the reality the one who comes and says to me i want to memorize half the quran in ramadan i'm going to say to you habibi go back to sleep i'm going to be honest you haven't got the memory of ibn abbas you know ibn abbas learned how to speak hebrew in 10 days huh you haven't got the memory of ibn abbas brother unless you do if you do that's something else which i don't think you do طيب let's write a title goals in ramadan and let's write this together so we want to first speak about our goals and then we'll speak about things that we want to give up or bad habits that we want to give up i think a practical goal for every single one in this masjid that many times almost every year it's probably not met is finishing the quran let's be honest put your hand up if you put this go- if you make this go- if you've already made this goal in your head that i want to finish the quran in ramadan put your hand up high so i can see hey what mashallah almost everyone has any one of you written this goal down put your hand up if you've written this goal down you have mashallah this goes on the ball you have to come on allahu akbar <laughs> mashallah good طيب goal number 1 in ramadan 
read the whole Quran. Read the whole Quran. Something very practical. Okay. Now let's put steps to fulfill this goal. Let's put steps now. So the next, the, sub the subtitle under this, this is the first main title, yes? Steps I have to take practically to finish reading the Quran in Ramadan. <coughs> write this subtitle. Yum. Number one. I need to, of course, read one juzah a day. So I put this as number one. One juzah a day. One juzah a day is how many pages, my dear brothers and sisters? How much is one juzah? 20. 20 pages. 20 pages. 20 pages. So let's say one juzah or slash 20 pages a day. 20 pages a day. Let's write this down. 20 pages a day. All right. This is where the application has to be individualized. When do I start work? What time do I have throughout the day? When do I sit in the masjid? When do I sit down? How do I get to work? For example, let's start from the start of the morning. I go to work at what time? Let's say 7 o'clock. How do I get to work? Do I commute by bus or train? If yes, this is beautiful. Because you have at least 20 minutes to half an hour in the train. So you know your schedule. Put this, I'm going to read now, five pages. I know I have time before Dhuhr, when I have a break. I have a one hour break every day. In this one hour, what do I do? Go to the bathroom. Well, you're not eating anymore. Don't tell me now I'm going to have lunch. My lunch used to take half an hour. Now you're disciplined. Now you're becoming a disciplined Muslim. Khalas. Suck up the thirst, suck up the hunger. And you're becoming a disciplined Muslim now. So I have one hour. What do I do in this one hour? Go to the bathroom. Renew my wudu. Pray dhuhr. And now I have another half an hour. I'm not eating anymore. So let's say half an hour of reading Quran during my break. If that is practical for you, of course. I'm just now throwing around ideas of what a general person's life is. On the way back to work, if you're commuting, same thing. You use that time to read. Don't use that time to scroll. Ya ikhwah, this is something that we're going to speak about in the bad habits. My house is close to the masjid. Am I going to go to the masjid for Maghrib? Yes or no? This is something else we're going to speak about, point number two. If yes, can I come to the masjid? 20 minutes early? If yes, let me fit in five pages or three pages during this time. Everyone knows their schedule and everyone knows their pockets of when they have some free time. So write this down, individualize it to yourself, finish writing it. I'll give you guys a few minutes. You know your schedule, you know your break times, you know when you have free time. So write in those times, uh, reading Quran. Khalas, I'm going to work towards my goal. That's day number one finished. I'll give you guys a couple of minutes to finish. Practicality, my dear brothers. Practicality. You have a one hour break. Half an hour for salah and wudu. Ten minutes to lie down, regain some energy. Spend 20 minutes to read Quran. What's the issue? Now you're sitting down comfortable anyway. Wherever you are, in your office, in your workplace, you're, you have a place of rest, yes? I'll talk about that. And do this every single day. Now we come to the weekend, we have more time. Let me read more. If I can read more, let me read more. Write it down. 
how much time do you want to dedicate on the weekends for those who have the weekends off? Be practical. And I'm telling you something right now. And I'll give, say it straight to your face. If you're not used to reading Quran, if you're not consistently reading Quran in your day-to-day -day life, and you think you're going to put a block of three hours that I'm just going to sit there and read Quran, you're being impractical. Rather, even a block of one hour is too much. For those who aren't used to it. If you're not used to reading a lot of Quran, at least a juz a day, then putting a schedule and writing in your schedule, I'm going to sit for two hours and read Quran, you're being impractical. I'm telling you right now, you will not handle that. You will not handle two hours of straight reading Quran. So be practical in your scheduling. Half an hour blocks. Half an hour blocks. Huh? This is for the weekend I'm talking about. Half an hour, go do something for 20 minutes. For 10 minutes. You want to come back and read after that? Then do that. This is one of the most important aspects also of scheduling. Knowing your energy and knowing how much effort I can exert uh, in the time slot necessary or in the time slot that, that it takes for my energy to be finished, to be exerted. It could be 20 minutes, could be half an hour. Every 20 minutes, I'm going to take a five minutes break. There's no issue. Schedule this and write this down. Now, alhamdulillah, we have finished the Qur'an. Khalas, we've set out our goal for the entirety of Ramadan. Again, you know your schedule, you know your pockets. It's very practical. This entire juzu, this entire juzu for someone that is very slow, just so we are again not overwhelmed. Oh, juzu, 20 pages, so much. If you are very slow, I'm, I'm talking turtle level. It'll take you maybe one and a half hours. That's if you're very slow. Say two hours, yakhi. I'm sure you can find two hours here and there to put it during the day. Spread it out throughout the day. And this is something also very powerful too, as I said. Not to exert all your energy in one go. Because this will make you bored. And this will make you give up. For a person who is fast-paced in reading and is good in reading, they will be able to finish the juice in 20 minutes. 25 minutes, half an hour. I'm a bit slow in my recitation, to be honest. Naturally, I'm a bit slow. Uh, except in... <laughs> he's laughing because in the Hajjad we go a bit turbo. But naturally, naturally, I'm very slow in reading. So for me, it takes me around half an hour to finish the juz. Because I'm, I'm a bit slow when I read. So let's say half an hour. طيب, this is goal number one. Something practical, yes? Let's put another title. Goal number two in Ramadan. What do I want to do in Ramadan? Attend the masjid. What salawat? So put this title. Attending the masjid for obligatory salas. Write this down. Hmm? Ah. One nisa come on, ready. Again, you know your, you know your life. Can I attend Fajr? I work early. I start work at 7 o'clock. Would I be able to make Fajr at, what time is Fajr now? 6.15? But it's probably going to change soon to 6.20 or 6.25. Would I be able to make half an hour early before I normally leave my house? Can I come just 20 minutes early to come to Fajr? Again, you know yourself. Aisha, definitely. We have to come for Aisha. Khalas, there's no excuse. Unless you're working night shifts, Aisha is going to be 9.30. You're going to definitely come to Aisha, inshaAllah ta'ala. But put a little sub goal. This is a very important goal too. Next to Aisha. So we want to do Fajr and we want to do Aisha. Can I come during the day? If I can, ahlan wa sahlan. If I can't due to work, due to this, due to tiredness, whatever, you're far from the masjid, khalas. Don't put these impractical goals. But you want to do something that you don't usually do. We're not saying to be lazy. We're saying to add a little bit that is not impractical to your life. I come home work at Asr time. 
I normally don't go to Asr. That's fine. Okay, come to Maghrib. You'll go home, rest for an hour or two hours, regain some energy just before Maghrib Salah. Come and pray in the masjid and go back home, ya Wallahi, the food on the table is not running away, ya akhwa. It's not going to run away. Wallah, when you get home, alhamdulillah. Wallahi, when you get home, this food is going to be there for you to eat. The difference between praying, Wallahi, I've actually timed it. I've actually timed it. The difference between, and I'm a bit fanatic with time. And the ones who know me, they know I time everything. The difference between praying in the masjid, that's if you live in local areas. I'm going to say Roxy, Meadow Heights. Roxy and Meadow Heights. If you live in this local area, Wallahi, the difference between praying in the masjid and praying at home is around 10 minutes. That's the difference. 10 minutes. And again, we promise you, here in HYC, inshallah, and I hope Sheikh Abdullah doesn't get upset for me by speaking on, on his behalf. We promise you that our, our Maghrib will be very short. Very short. We pray, make Adhan, we have Iftar here, some date, some Wura. We pray a very short Salah to encourage everyone to come to the Masjid. And you go home, ya Wallah, the difference is around 10 minutes. If you really want to be exaggerative and you live a bit further out, you say the difference is around 15 minutes. 15 minutes, ya You're going to lose the reward of Fard Salah in the Masjid. And that Fard Salah, ya akhwa, is so... Allah is so generous with Fard Salah. Wallahi, Allah is so generous. You do not know the rewards you get by praying in the Masjid in congregation. Especially in Ramadan. The difference is 10 to 15 minutes maximum. Yeah, you're going to die in 10 or 15 minutes. If you delay your food by 15 minutes, you're going to die. Anyone going to die from starvation? Yeah. Anyone anorexic here? Where's the skinniest guy in the masjid? Yeah. Who's the skinniest guy? He's the skinniest guy, yeah. Him, if he doesn't eat for six months, yeah, he'll be all right. <laughs> well, Allah forgive me. Uh, you put yourself in the, in the lizard hole, brother. <laughs> you put yourself in the range of fire. <laughs> La ilaha illallah. So let's add an extra salah in Ramadan. Something that I don't normally pray. And Maghrib is a big, is a big one. No, no one's here in Maghrib. Why no one's here in Maghrib? As I said, inshallah, promise. Okay, let me promise on my behalf. If I lead the salah, I promise I'll read very short surahs. And I'll ask Shaykh Abdullah to do the same. And every Imam here, inshallah, ta'ala, I pro inshallah, I'll ask them to do the same. That's a promise for me. Aisha uh, Salah. Let's go to Salat al Aisha now. What do I want to change about Salat al Aisha? What is practical for me? Salat al Aisha is far greater and far more important than Taraweeh. Far more greater in reward and far more beloved in the sight of Allah Azza wa Jal, then Salat al Taraweeh. If you are so busy, yeah, I'm going to put a scenario now so you guys understand, inshallah. If you are so busy, you have something. I have guests, I have this, oh, people come up with all these excuses. I have guests. Come and pray Isha and leave the Taraweeh. There's no problem. If you're so busy, you have something? Cut what you're doing, just come and pray Isha and continue what you're doing if you're busy. There's no issue. But what the issue is, is when you leave Isha in the masjid and then you come for Taraweeh after that. This is very problematic, my dear brothers and sisters. This shows that our priorities are out of whack, are upside down. So let's put next to Salat al Isha. Come to Salat al Isha five minutes early to guarantee that we will pray Salat al Isha. Bas. Which means I have to leave the house five minutes early. That's five minutes. Yikha. This is something new we're going to try to achieve in Ramadan. Normally I'm late. Normally, ha, huh, I might catch the last rak'ah. Normally I catch half of the salah. Taraweeh is more important because we're praying 11 rak'ah, it should be more important than just four, four rak'ah. What's this? No. Isha is. You cannot compare. You cannot compare a, a compulsory act to a sunnah act in, in reward. You cannot compare this. So let's write this down, inshallah ta'ala. Coming to Isha on time. 
or even before by a couple of minutes. In the first couple of weeks of Isha, in Ramadan, sorry, we will pray Isha at 9.30. Or wherever masjid you're going to. Whatever masjid you're going to, go on time. But here in HOAC, we want to be praying at 9.30. Inshallah ta'ala. This is it for salawat. Congregation salah. I think this is practical. Yes? If you usually pray Fajr or Isha, now we want to add Maghrib. If you usually don't pray none of these, now we want to add Isha at least. Well, we're going to add Isha either way. Because most people come to Isha. If I only pray Isha, then let me add Fajr. If Fajr is not practical, let me add Dhuhr. Dhuhr not practical, let me add Asr. Asr not practical, let me add Maghrib. Let me add one more Salah in the Masjid than I usually do. Whatever is practical and whatever works for you. طيب. Let's move on. Point number three. And maybe we'll end up with these three points. And wallahi, if we achieve these, just these things, we will achieve a great amount of rewards in Ramadan, inshallah ta'ala. Or maybe we'll add two more things. Sadaqa. Sadaqa is very important as a good act. And uh, and listening to lectures or beneficial reminders. Ya akhwa, reminders and lectures is of, is of the most accessible and easy things to do in today's time. Bifadda min Allah Azza wa Jal, I finished entire series. Yeah? I'm not going to lie. Over the breakfast table. Just eating breakfast. I put it around 20 minutes. 15 minutes. How long it takes me to eat breakfast? I just exposed myself. 20 minutes is a long breakfast. <laughs> 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Listen, one day, two days, three days, four days. After one month, you finish the whole series. One of the most wasted times, and this is a major goal I want everyone to focus on. One of the most wasted opportunities in seeking knowledge and in listening to beneficial lectures is travel time. Travel time. Travel time. Pay attention. Put your hand up if it takes you around half an hour to get to work. Half an hour to get to work. MashaAllah, half an hour. Huh? Half an hour to get to work. Half an hour, half an hour, half an hour. Half an hour. Allahumma barik. That means, ya ikhwa, that means you have one hour every day. Salaamu Going to work and coming back from work every single day, you could listen to something beneficial. What do we normally do in this time? What do we do? Yalla, tell me. Huh? Scroll? If you're driving, no. you see, even when you drive, you scroll too, to be honest. I'm not going to lie. What do we normally do in this time, ikhwah? Dhikr. MashaAllah, this is, this is something else. This is an old generation. They are up there, ikhwah. We can't compete with them. Allahumma barik. True? Sheikh's children are always special, MashaAllah. His father was a big imam, MashaAllah. In this time, what are we doing? Most of the time, we are wasting our time. In most situations, half an hour to work, 15 minutes to work. 15 minutes, ya akhwa, goes a long way. And wallahi, you would be surprised, and I've said this more than once, you would be surprised how many things I mention in my lectures, quotes of the scholars, beneficial reminders. Wallah, I don't even know how I remember them anyway. Most of these things were things that I benefited from Lessons that I used to listen to and back from uni. Wallahi, I, at the end of the year, do you know, because one of the most beneficial things of Telegram, whoever doesn't have Telegram, I advise you to download Telegram. Because there's these channels, and the mashayikh, they have channels. And you put, press play, go to the music file, press play, and it just starts playing one after the other. If I was to calculate for you now, how many hours... And how many series and how many lectures 
I was able to finish in a 20 minute drive to school and a 15 minute drive back home because in the morning it's a lot more traffic than in the afternoon that's in Medina anyway yani. you would be surprised how much you finish at the end of the month you would be surprised how much you actually retain here you would be surprised how it softens your heart and what a beautiful reminder the first thing to listen to in the middle of the, yani the first thing in the morning going to work is to listen to something that softens your heart Something about Ramadan, something that reminds you of Allah. Wallahi, it gives you the energy for the rest of the day. Write this down. Travel time. Making use of travel time. Look for a good series to listen to. In Arabic is preferred if you know Arabic. If you don't know Arabic, may Allah help you to find something interesting that you can continue to listen to in English. And listen. You would be surprised at the end of the month, Wallahi, how much knowledge you've gained. Wallahi, I guarantee. And mark my words, if you do this continuously every day, just 15 minutes, 20 minutes of commute time, at the end of the month, come tell me how many hours you've done. Come tell me how many beneficial things that you've benefited. Come tell me how much your Iman is peaking. Travel time, write it down. Write this, write it down. Travel time, listen to a nice lecture series. Something especially about Ramadan. Because you're in Ramadan. Everyone again knows how long their commute time takes. From 15 minutes to 20 minutes to half an hour. Write it down. This travel time, I'm going to benefit from it. Everyone finished? Let's move on. What other acts of good deeds do we want to achieve in Ramadan? We want to talk about sadaqah? Well, khalas, this is enough. We don't want to overburden the people. I think I'll leave it at this. I think I'll leave it at this, inshallah. Hmm? Dua? Dua. This is a powerful one. Make time for dua. Schedule in a time for dua. Schedule it. I want to make dua at this time every day. You know your schedule. I think let's leave it at this in regards to good habits. But the ones who want to perform extra, write it down for yourself. And everyone, as I said, knows their capabilities. And everyone knows what they are able to achieve without overburdening and keeping within the practical realm. If you want to, for example, add, I can give you a couple more examples to add in your schedule, but I think what we wrote so far is sufficient for the vast majority of general people, I think. Do you agree with me or you, you don't agree? Put your hand up if you agree. There you are. If you disagree, put your hand up. If you disagree, meet me outside. Sadaqa, <laughs> for example, just as an example. Giving some charity every day. You come into the masjid, just put five dollars, ten dollars, you know, give a little tap on the machine. Try to do sadaqah every day, uh, especially in the last ten nights. This is another goal that you can put for yourself. But I think I'll leave it here. Tayyib, let's talk about bad habits now. Let's talk about bad habits. Let's put another title: bad habits, or getting rid of bad habits. Or destroying bad habits. Let's say destroying bad habits. I like this word. Destroying bad habits. Now this is sensitive. Because I can't expose people's bad habits. But let's pinpoint now all together. One bad habit. That annoys you. And that you wish to get rid of in Ramadan. Just one. Let's write it down. If someone wants to give me some examples, that's fine, but I'm not going to put anyone on the spot. Talking too much. Talking too much. Abdullah Abi thinks, thinks that he talks too much. I might agree. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Hey, Zakaria, what did you want to say, Habibi? Swearing. Swearing. Tayyib, mashallah. Very good. Sleeping. Write these things down. Sleeping too much. Abu Karim. He comes to the masjid to sleep. He doesn't get enough sleep at home. He comes to the masjid to sleep more. <laughs> It 
just one bad habit. Let's, as, it, as I said, let's keep it practical. Wallahi, you're not going to turn into angels overnight. You're not going to turn into angels in Ramadan. You have to understand this. These things, habits generally take a long time to become a part of your character. To change, real change, takes a long time. Everyone write down one bad habit that you want to change. Something about you that annoys you. Something that you know is sinful that you can't stop. Pornography. Masturbation for the youth, the boys. These things destroy the fast. Pornography, ya Really, we lack awareness in the harms and damages that is caused by pornography. Pornography destroys the mind alongside the soul. It makes you have no motivation to do anything in life. It causes a young man that is supposed to be full of energy and eagerness to all of a sudden have no drive have no eagerness, have no enthusiasm. They just want that constant satisfaction that a quick يعني, clip gives. That normally in life, in order for you to attain that satisfaction, you'd have to work really hard to feel satisfied. And I'm not talking about sexual, satisf sexual satisf uh, satisfaction. I'm talking about satisfaction in general. How do we avoid pornography? I want to talk about this for a second. First and foremost, what leads someone to pornography? Number one, free time. Number two, being alone. We have to understand what the issue is. And we have to know how to treat these certain symptoms in order for the issue to be resolved as a whole. And these are things that you have to literally force yourself away from. But most of the youth that fall into pornography or are addicted, it's because they have too much time, because they have access to technology too freely, it's because they are alone too often, Especially at nights. This is when the shayateen now come and يعني, become a savage with your mind. So how do we solve these problems? Number one, don't be alone. Try to always be out of the house. If you're a young man in particular, I'm talking to the young men, يعني, and person that is not married. Well, if you're married, the situation is much harder because if you're addicted to pornography while being married, then that is a serious mental health issue that has to be resolved probably by professionals. Wallahi, and it destroys marriages. It destroys lives. It destroys everything. It's, it's like drugs. You see the bad effects of drugs. Pornography is exactly like drugs. Exactly like drugs. Probably even worse, actually. Free time. Being alone. Having technology around you all the time. If you're a young man and want real change in Ramadan, then leave your phone out of your room when you go to sleep. If you sleep by yourself or if you have your own room. During the day, try not to be at home. Come to the masjid, go for a walk, go for a bike ride. This is again another sickness that we face so badly in this in today's time, subhanAllah. Young men at home all the time. Ya akhwa, the house is for the woman, it's not for the man. We encourage the woman to stay home. But a young man shouldn't be home. The sickness of a man staying at home by himself, a young boy, is so troublesome. Wallahi, we don't actually understand the depth and the seriousness of of this of this sickness feminizing our, our young men 
That's what it is. Feminizing our young men. Yeah, he, you're 12, 13 years old. Get out and do something in your life, man. Come to the center. Come to... Go bike riding, yachi. Go for a walk. Go play sports. Go martial arts. Do something to fill your schedule up so you're not there either playing games or yani, playing with something else, ikhwa. Really, it's serious. Wallahi. It's a very... It's a major issue, ikhwa. A major issue. Allah said about the woman, وَقَرْنَ فِي بُيُوتِ كُنَّا Stay in your homes. The most beloved place to Allah for a woman is that she stays at home. Because the woman is a fitna. The woman is beautiful. The woman, Allahu Akbar, destroys the man, ya akhwa. A beautiful woman will destroy a whole nation of men with her beauty alone. That's if she's not trying to seduce. Imagine when she's trying to seduce. We're laughing about her, but wallahi, the matter is very serious. As for the men, ya akhwa, the men, what are the men doing? They should out be working in the masjid, serving the community, serving their families, attaining skills, ya akhi, playing sports, playing martial arts, exerting that energy in every possible way so it doesn't retract and lash back at his raging hormones and causes him to do haram. Because you have energy, yakhi. as a young man you have energy. Oh parents, understand this. A young man has energy. And he has hormones. <laughs> Testosterone burning like a volcano. He wants to satisfy. And this is just a cycle of sickness that we fall into. How do we again, some of the practical steps to avoid these things. As I said, fill your schedule. O oh youth, O oh young man. Fill your schedule. Don't be at home as much as you can. Be in a public space. Obviously you can't do anything in a public space, can you? It is better if you have siblings that you all sleep in the same room. It makes these things difficult, of course. Do not take your phone in when you are going to sleep. Try it. Well, this by itself would, would solve many of these issues. Because many of these haram things doesn't happen during the day. Uh, during the day, it's a risky business. At night, everyone is sleeping. The shaitan comes to you. Khalas, now you're alone. Now you're by yourself. This is something practical that the youth can do to avoid falling into pornography. When you go to bed, leave your phone outside of the room. Leave your phone somewhere else. Give your phone to your mom, give your phone to your dad. Say, give it to me in the morning. Write this down. If you don't have the issue yourself, write it down for someone else. So you can teach it to someone else. Leave your phone out of the room when you're going to sleep. Write this down. Everyone, please. In summary, whatever bad habit that we wrote, we have to think and cont uh, cont uh, contemplate about what causes us to have this bad habit. Someone says swearing. Uh, uh, questions after, inshallah. We have this problem, whatever bad habit it is, wasting time, too much social media, swearing, uh, backbiting. backbiting, gossiping, uh, little yap 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 yap, too many too much yaps, sisters to do too much yaps, and brothers are doing too much yaps today too. But I used to think that gossiping and that was just for the sisters, subhanAllah. These days I found out that the men are doing the gossiping too, maybe because they're spending too much time at home actually. Well, that's the reality. Well, they're spending too much time at home. They're getting all these feministic traits. Yeah, 
the men, insha'Allah, by the way, talking about men and uh, men and masculinity, whatever, I'll be starting a series very soon about masculinity, insha'Allah ta'ala. About what a man, a man is and what are the Islamic traits of men. I'll be starting this very soon, inshallah. Maybe we'll do short clips and we'll be posting them on Instagram and what have you, and Facebook and whatever. Tayyip, swearing, watching uh, inappropriate things, uh, gossiping, backbiting, wasting time. Let's think about what causes me to do these things. Why am I swearing? Why am I swearing? Because I hang around with some people that is a bad influence. Like, what do I do in Ramadan? Try to avoid these people. I, sure. Identify what is causing you, what is itching you to do this haram habit or this bad habit. And everyone knows themselves. What is causing you to do this? What is causing you to spend so much time on social media? Maybe because my phone is with me everywhere. Again, one of the solutions to that is to keep your phone somewhere known in the house. Huh? If you need your phone to be in the house for alarms or whatever, keep it far away from you. Put it on the desk, put it somewhere that you're not sleeping, right next to it. For example, identify the issue and identify the reason of that issue. What is the reason for, for this issue? Why am I falling into this? I'm falling into this because of such and such. And everyone knows themselves, Ikhwah. Everyone knows themselves. Okay. After I've identified the reason for this issue, after, so I've identified the issue, and I've identified what is causing me to, to perform this issue. Now let us talk about how do I avoid the reason for this issue? How do I avoid this? I play too much games, and it wastes my time. Tayyip, let's see what we can do with your computer, or with your laptop during Ramadan. Do I need to have my computer open all the time in Ramadan? No, back it away, disconnect it. Again, take it to your mother's room, your father's room, say, please, dad, mom, keep it away from me for this, for this month. Because if you can change Ramadan, inshallah, some of these habits will stick with you after Ramadan. Identify the issue. Identify the cause of the issue. And identify what practical steps, what practical steps do I take in order for me to seriously fight myself and to seriously avoid falling into this trap. Just for Ramadan. We just want to do it for Ramadan. It's easy. Just for Ramadan. Just for Ramadan. Walhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. If anyone has any questions, fire away some questions, inshallah ta'ala. Who had the question? Who wants to ask? No, Father. This one isn't a question. This one is for um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He rewards us if we avoid a bad habit, for example, like smoking, looking at bad things, and getting a look for it. We have one percent for avoiding a bad habit. No, Zakallah khair. The brother's reminding you that the Prophet sallallahu says that the one who avoids a haram action, then he will be rewarded for that. And that is, of course, when you are consciously trying to avoid it. Like the bad habits that we are talking about. He mentioned smoking, <laughs> smoking for example. Hmm. In reality, we all have the ability, wallahi. We all have the ability to change and we all have the ability to give up bad habits. And the biggest evidence for that is Ramadan itself. Because we see, for example, an addict of smoking, an addict of other things. We see that he says outside of Ramadan, Ya Akhi, I'm addicted. I can't stop smoking. I can't. I just, I, I go crazy. I can't. But then subhanAllah, Ramadan comes, Ya Akhi, and then you just don't. What do you mean? You can't. So how, how do you avoid it in Ramadan? Or at least during the day when you're fasting? There's 12 or 13 hours of, of uh, fasting there, brother. Haha, <laughs> it's not a couple of minutes that you can just resist. But why can't you resist these 12 hours every day? Huh? You can. That proves 
that in reality, wallahi, we actually do have the ability of change. But we like to make excuses for ourselves. But insanu ala nafsihi basira. Walaw alqa ma'adira. Look what Allah Look at this, subhanAllah. Look at these beautiful words that Allah mentions. Everyone knows themselves, Allah is saying to you. Everyone knows themselves. Everyone is overlooking themselves and they know exactly what is going on in their hearts. But they throw excuses, justifications. Oh, but I can't. Oh, it's hard. Oh. Justifications and false excuses. بَلِ الْإِنسَانُ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ بَصِيرَةِ وَلَوْ أَلْقَى مَا عَذِيرَةِ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Anyway, if there's any more questions, Ikhwah, fire away or else I'll finish talking. Uh, no. Hmm? Yeah, if you have no beneficial lectures to listen to during the commute time, then listen to Quran. But I recommend, honestly, I recommend lectures. Because the lecture will motivate you to read more Quran. When you have this Iman boost every day in the morning, when you're going to work, when you're coming back from work, this gives you a huge motivation. You hear this beautiful ayat, you hear this beautiful hadith. Uh, if you spoke, uh, listen to a good sheikh that knows how to really pump you up and teach you something of benefit while pumping you up, خلاص, you go home, you're fire. Akhi. You want to read the Quran for the rest of the night. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> well, I recommend in English in Arabic. Akhi. I don't listen to English. There's many. Yeah, there's many. You have uh, Sheikh Abu Sahak's page. Sheikh Abu Yakhwa for the Arabic ones who understand Arabic. Sheikh Abu Sahak is يعني, one of the best speakers, to be honest. And one of the most knowledgeable speakers, mashallah, especially in the science of hadith. Sheikh Abu Sahak. يعني, my Shaykh, Shaykh Abdullah Shanqiti, uh, he has great lessons of tafsir, very great Iman booster alongside. Mahua, I love the lectures that I love are the ones that are knowledge based and Iman boosters. You know, some people they just fire Iman booster, but there's no, ha, the essence of knowledge is missing. But the Mashayikh that know, and these are the Mashallah senior Mashayikh and the senior scholars of our time that know how to give you a piece of knowledge some sound good knowledge but also they put a twist of iman boost in there too this is my favorite lectures to listen to and there's many in reality wallahi mashallah there's a lot of khair there's a lot of khair out there but this is for arabic i don't know for huh la ansah la ansah bihi la ilaha la ansah bihi khalas well, English, to be honest, I, I'm, I fall very short with English speakers. I cannot stand to listen to English speakers. I'm not going to lie. I don't listen to English speakers at all. So I don't know. I don't know anyone. You know, I can't really recommend anyone to be honest in English. Uh, anything else, Yekho? Hmm? Naam? Abu Bakr Zod, mashallah. Abu Bakr Zod. Yani some of our mashayikh from Sydney actually, Sheikh Jalal Shami. Uh, that was just a couple of days ago. Sheikh Muhammad Duar. Uh, Sheikh Fayez, for example. We have. Uh, who else is from the mashayikh, Yekho? They were all good speakers, actually, these speakers, mashallah. Huh? Sheikh Naseem, Abidi. He's also, mashallah, a good speaker in English. Uh, Muhammad Hablas. If you want a good motivation, yani, with a broken table at the end. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, huh? <laughs> yani, these are some of the English speakers, huh? Okay. They reminded me, I forgot about them, subhanAllah. But whenever they ask about English speakers, my mind goes international. And I don't know any international. Yani. These mashayikh, I know them because they're our mashayikh. But they come here and I listen to the lectures while they're here. Or else, other than that, international speakers, I don't listen to. Yani. Khair, inshallah. Zakhmullah khair. Uh, I hope uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts from us this uh, effort. Yes. And uh, we are able to put some practical changes. And uh, barakallah fikum, yani, uh, put an effort, yeah. Put an effort, inshallah ta'ala, for Ramadan. And the one who comes to Allah Azza wa Jal, 
uh, a handspan, Allah will come a arm length, and whoever comes to Allah walking, Allah will come to him running. Wajazakumullah khairan wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala rasulah Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wassalamu alaikum.